Halo Reach is finally here. Again. This time on Xbox One, Steam, and nowhere else. It's been about a week since the Master Chief Collection launched on PC, and while console players are enjoying the fresh introduction of Reach to their library of Halo games, PC players are starting their journey with the final Halo game from Bungie before handing over the reins to 343. The internal engine Bungie used to build their Halo games was notoriously messy and disorganized under the hood. It didn't help that it wasn't well documented by Bungie themselves either, so the transition of its keys over to 343 was a hard one during the development process of Halo 4. Keeping that in mind, taking a decade-old game like Reach, getting it to run at a frame rate it wasn't built for, for a resolution that it wasn't designed for, on a variety of systems and hardware that it wasn't compatible for, must have been quite a nightmare. And there is evidence in the port that Reach must have indeed been quite difficult wrangling it into the MCC. There are problems and issues we will go over, but as it stands, I'm deeply impressed with how stable the launch has been, and after spending a week with the port, I feel confident in my opinions about it, and I'm going to share them with you. One of the first things that worried me about this port is how crowded the PC gaming market is. There are a lot of popular games fighting for attention, and a port of an old console shooter would need to really be enticing to attract itself an audience. It needed to launch with reasons to play. With the release of Reach, the MCC also had a UI overhaul for its main menu. Now, it utilizes the Unreal Engine to power many elements, such as a proper progression system and in-game customization system for your Reach character. For whatever reason, something primal in the back of your lizard brain really likes seeing numbers go up in progression systems. It's why games like Call of Duty are so popular. People really like just seeing numbers go up. And Reach's new progression system taps into this by essentially being a battle pass, with each tier rewarding the player a piece of armor or various other personal customization pieces. I'm not too sure why they didn't just use the classic Reach system, which everyone seemed to universally enjoy, and this new one isn't really a system I'm a fan of because of how addictive battle passes can be, but I'm not oblivious as to why it's here. There's a lot of XP to grind, but the XP grind wouldn't mean anything if there wasn't a lot to do. And thankfully, there is a lot to do here. MCC Reach launched with a huge variety of playlists and modes, as well as giving Invasion its own dedicated competitive playlist, and including firefight playlists for those who enjoy the PvE gameplay. There's a lot of ways to play out of the gate. But sadly, there are some ways to play that are discouraged by what 343 values as important for XP gains. Unlike the 360 version of Halo Reach, the MCC version halts your XP progression if you play Campaign, Forge, or Customs. Halo Reach is a campaign with your own personalized Spartan, so rewarding players for playing the campaign allowed you to further customize Noble Six in said campaign. De-incentivizing the campaign playthrough means that players feel pressured to not play the whole package and only play modes that reward XP. It's a very backwards mindset and needs to change in the future. 343 did say that they're going to reevaluate how they approach XP distribution, so I'm hopeful that this can change. And despite those criticisms, the incentive to play Reach is strong, the rewards are there, the playlists are there, and I've been enjoying myself. There is a lot of content here to jump into. PC games are known for their modularity, whether it be modding or in-game features to help tailor the experience to our liking. So how does the Halo Reach port handle this? It's a bit of a mixed bag, but I would say that it's about 75% there. 343 has been very candid and open about modding for the game online. A lot of developers launch games on PC without an intimate understanding that modding is a big part of the fun for certain PC gamers. There's a reason that games like Left 4 Dead live for so long, it's because of their modding communities. So seeing 343 so in tune with what PC players enjoy is incredibly refreshing and satisfying. The in-game options for mouse gameplay is also quite good. Not every developer thinks of things like separate sliders for zoom sensitivity and hipfire sensitivity. 
As of right now, there's no way to really assign one function to two separate keys, and there's no way to have a tap to interact feature, it's always hold to interact. But overall, there is a lot that you can customize here. However, what the port offers in the graphics option menu is simply not okay. The game has only one option in its graphics settings. Performance mode, original mode, and enhanced mode. No way to disable anti-aliasing, no way to adjust ambient occlusion amount, no resolution scaling option, no contrast settings, no texture settings or ways to boost anisotropic filtering. The game's visual style is locked to three different presets with no way to adjust it in-game. In order to turn on 16 times anisotropic filtering, I had to leave the game and use the NVIDIA control panel to force the game to launch with this. Same with disabling anti-aliasing to give reshade and access to the game's depth buffer. This is not how PC games should be done. An argument that I have seen online for why the graphics options menu may be so non-existent is because Bungie's Reach engine was quite possibly not built with ways to separately adjust aspects of the game's graphics. It's possibly all tied together in the game's code, and that is a real possibility, but then again, I am not an expert on the way that these Halo games run. I do hope that this is addressed in the future, but the game does offer some good options that not every console port usually keeps in mind, such as the ability to adjust crosshair placement on your screen and separate field of view sliders for first person view and third person view. This is greatly appreciated. Audio options are also included, but due to some issues with the sound that I'll get into later, it's a little bit hard to give an opinion on them. As I said, it's 75% there for player modularity. What I would recommend is that 343 needs to provide more graphical options in-game instead of relying on the community to just mod in or out whatever graphic settings we want. Here's an interesting topic for me. How well does it represent the game? How well does it run? How well does it look? During the porting process, things can get lost in translation. Porting a game over to a new system means completely rewriting the code and the way that the game thinks. And humans are not perfect, so some details will simply vanish during a porting process. It may be a small texture detail here and there. It may be a specific graphical effect. And Halo has a very rocky history with the porting process. The MCC version of Combat Evolved is utilizing a terrible port job of Combat Evolved that looks significantly worse than the original Xbox release. Halo 3 on the Master Chief Collection currently suffers from audio issues that make it sound softer than it should sound normally. Reach also unfortunately suffered from some issues during the porting process. As it stands right now, the sound is completely wrong for the game. Double kill. Music cues are sometimes completely off and mistimed in the campaign. Sounds are muffled and not prioritized in the correct order, with background ambience sometimes being louder than the actual gunshots themselves. The poor assault rifle sounds like it's being muffled by a pillow. During high-intensity moments in the campaign or firefight, audio can come out delayed or sometimes just not play at all. It's not uncommon to find your gun audio be completely desynced when things get heated. Thankfully, 343 became aware of the audio issues during flighting for the game and are still working on a fix for the audio encoder. What I can't comment on, unfortunately, are other areas of trouble. Bungie's Reach Engine scaled certain effects with your resolution, so the higher your resolution, the dimmer and softer certain effects became. Ambient occlusion lighting, or the sheen of the light on your gun, can become quite dull and hard to see at high resolutions, which can lead to the game looking flat if you're running it at 4K or 1440p. It doesn't help that 343's removal of the simulated per object motion blur and film grain can lead to the game really looking flat in areas when it should look more filmic. Certain things like ambient occlusion can be boosted using reshade and film grain can be added back in as well via reshade, but it's sad to see external means being required to get the game looking a bit closer to its 360 iteration. 
Surely though, there must be pluses out there, and there are a lot of pluses. Reach is an incredibly well-optimized game on the PC, when played at 60 frames per second. There's an optional unlocked frame rate mode, but 343 warns that it's not finished yet, so weird oddities can occur if you use it. I'd recommend keeping the game locked to 60. With the increased frame rate also comes an increased draw distance that is substantially further reaching than what is available on the Xbox 360. Yes, you will still see some objects from a distance resemble mashed potatoes more than rocks, but it's not as aggressive as it was on the 360, and when combining it with the 16x anisotropic filtering for the ground textures, the game can look remarkably well for something that released nearly a decade ago. People don't hold up so well in-game, but things like the skyboxes and the gun models still look great to this day. Reach is a beautiful game to look at, and I'm happy that this port mostly gets the job done, even if there are issues that prevent it from being great. Halo Reach is a functional translation of the console game for PCs, and the experience has been pretty great. The issues that do exist need to be addressed sooner rather than later, and the absence of Forge and Theater currently is strongly felt, but I can be patient for now. 343 hit the ground running with Reach's PC launch, and it's up to them to keep the momentum going. Games like Halo 5 have taught me to be very wary whenever 343 promises that something is coming soon, so I'm anxious that they won't keep the momentum going, but I hope that I'm wrong. Just a day or two ago, they released changes to the matchmaking playlist, removing maps and propping others up. They're already being very proactive with and engaging their new audience, and this is a good sign. Maybe things will be different this time around. Overall, I'm happy with this release. It's been far too long since an FPS Halo has had a launch this good, and I'm excited to keep playing more and covering it. I already have multiple videos in the works, and I'm curious to hear how you all feel about the port job. I'm also curious about how PC players feel about Reach. I'd love to hear first impressions on the series. And with that, I'll leave you all to it, and hopefully see you on the next video.